Murcia, in southeastern Spain, on the Costa Calida, is not far from the tourist havens of Alicante and Benidorm. The small town has cast a shadow over the region in recent weeks. The investigation into a grisly double murder has raised questions over the relationship between the Spanish press and police. Until recently, this sports arena was home to the pride of the town, CAV Mercia. This is the volleyball club where murder victim Ingrid Visser played for two years, and the same club founded by local celebrity Everdasto Lefanti. Previously, he was completely unknown, and he only became well known thanks to volleyball. He started the volleyball club CAV Mercia in 2005, and in an instant, the club was in the limelight of Spanish women's volleyball. Lefanti made his fortune as the owner of a marble mine before he pumped millions into a small provincial sports club, as did so many other big construction bosses and property magnates before the banking crisis. Apparently, being the sugar daddy of a sports club has its advantages. His fame opened doors to the world of politics for him. He made contact with political leaders, such as mayors and presidents of the autonomous regions. With sports as an excuse, they made contact to do business with each other. And doing business in Mercia means cronyism and corruption. It's a case of I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. In the past, business conflicts have usually been settled amicably. But the Eurozone crisis has changed everything. The Mafia never had to use violence. They have achieved their goals without violence. They rarely used any violence. And therefore, such a case attracts a lot of attention. On the 13th of May, Ingrid Visser and her partner Louis Severin disappeared. After several days with no contact, their families became concerned. They should have come back on Wednesday, which never happened. The searches began, continuing for two weeks. They ended abruptly, after a raid on a house revealed the bodies of two missing persons. The forensic examiners have visited the house. They have confirmed that a violent crime has been committed. It was just the next morning when local newspaper La Verdad was able to publish an extremely detailed report about the find. So just where did this information come from? That's the million euro question. The one million euro question that I will never answer. Ricardo Fernandez has been the crime reporter at La Verdad for 25 years. It's the largest newspaper in the region, and he's built up close contacts with the police over the years. He can always consult the best sources. If the police does not want to negotiate with me, and they don't say, listen, Ricardo, you can publish this and this, but this and this should not be published. If they want to keep everything as a secret, I wouldn't know what I can or cannot publish. If I publish something wrong, I could put someone in danger. The media in the victim's home nation of the Netherlands has been scandalized by the leaks, but the Spanish press and police have a notoriously close relationship. Facts from ongoing investigations almost never remain confidential. When something like this happens, the journalist has the imperative. He will consult with contacts, and leaks will happen. This is inherent to journalism and news production in Spain. Leaks are very common, especially in business news, where the public is very interested. That makes sense when you see how intense the pressure from the media is. The people who lead the investigations succumb to the pressure and still give information freely. This is how Ricardo sources information for his stories. In one week, he published daily revelations about the case, sometimes with chilling details reprinted in the Dutch press, leading to widespread criticism. This is our duty to society as journalists. There are details announced, but I think no unnecessarily macabre details. 
The information available to us goes much further than what has been published. The main suspect in the double murder case is the former manager of the volleyball club. According to reports, he may have conspired to have the young couple killed by two hired Romanian assassins. He worries about the future and about the course of this lawsuit. A murder trial like this one would typically be conducted in front of a jury in Spain, but the lawyer of the main suspect claims that his client has already been convicted in the court of public opinion, and that a fair trial is now impossible. The judges remain impartial and objective, but the people on the street who read the news, if they were chosen as jurors, would all have an opinion on the matter, and that is not good for the lawsuit. Viene ya con una idea preconcebida que es muy da muy dañina de cara al procedimiento. Yo entiendo que I understand that the court has to protect its interests. This is everyone's right. We need to know what's happened, and that has to lead to a conviction. And I have to protect my interests. And my interests are to inform the society. I cannot leave people in the dark. Ricardo Fernandez claims that he appreciates it's upsetting for family members to learn graphic details from the press, but insists that he doesn't feel responsible. It's not my responsibility. It's the police who haven't informed them properly. It's the fault of the police rather than me. Despite the outcry in the victim's homeland, here in Spain, very few are surprised by the level of detail revealed in the press. Are people in Spain used to these kinds of reports about crime? Yes. The public is accustomed to this type of leakage. It's seen as something quite ordinary in the Spanish news. The people are extremely affected by it, and that's why they want to know all about it. They don't want to know the important facts about what happened, the reasons that people have been driven to these things. They just want to know the details, and that's a bit morbid. The court has now decided to declare that judicial investigation is secret. No more information will come out about the case, at least officially. This is my profession, my work, the purpose of my work. The truth? Yes, the truth. Everything I publish must be true. Information that I can justify.